In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a sword action for our 2D RPG games. And we're going to uh, set up the sword uh, animation that we have created in the video previously. And we're going to also create a state machine to handle the state better. If you don't have the asset, just go in the description of this video. I put a link with everything in it. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to make the sword. So for making the sword, we need to have a state machine and we need to have an input to press for our animation to be displayed. So I'm going to first create the input. So for that, I'm going to go to project, project setting. I'm going to the input map. And so for that, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to add a new action. So for that, I'm going to, I'm going to a new action. I'm going to tap the name of it. So for me, it's going to be sword. And then I'm going to click on add. And here I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to look for a key that I can press that uh, will trigger the, uh, the attack. So here what I'm going to do is like I'm going to use X on my keyboard. So I'm just going to tap X and I'm going to click on OK. And what I'm going to do as well is like I'm going to do that for my controller. So for my controller, I already have plugged my controller through USB. I'm going to click on plus. And I have a controller that is mimicking an I, uh, Xbox uh, controller. So I'm just going to tap on A and it's going to uh, press like the joy button zero. Uh, and so now when I will be playing with my uh, gamepad, I will be able to also like uh, trigger the, um, the uh, input of the sword. So I'm going to click OK here. And so now I have created that uh, input. Perfect. So now we need to uh, rethink how we are making the uh, state so far because the problem that we're going to have is that uh, when the, the function that is like the, the most used is the move function. That's the one that is overriding everything because that's the pivot point of our uh, player script. All the uh, different uh, action you can perform are going to pass at some point through this function. So what we need to do is here, in that function, we need to trigger uh, our input. So here we just need to create a new if statement. And for that, we just need to say if input with a capital I is underscore action just press, we're going to lo look for sword. And then we're going to do something. For now, we're not going to do anything because if we are uh, trying to uh, play the, um, the sword animation, it's not going to work fully. I can show you actually. I can just click on anim state travel. I can put it here and I can replace walk with a uh, sword. And let's have a look. From here, you can see that like it doesn't work. Like it just display uh, just like a, not, not even like a tenth of a second, and that's it. And this is because the move function is overriding everything. So for that, we need now to create uh, a state machine. So for creating the state machine, what we need to do is we need to come here, and first we're gonna create what is called an enumerator. So here, for that, we need to uh, tap enum, and we need to give it a, a name. So for me, it's gonna be player underscore state. And here, uh, I'm gonna just uh, open curly bracket. And I'm going to tap my different state. So I'm going to have move. Uh, actually, I don't have, I don't need idle because idle is already in move. Sword, jump, and dead. Now that we have created that, we need to have a variable that can uh, serve like a sort of transition point to pass from one state to another one. So here we're going to call that variable current underscore state. And we're going to set it equal to be a player state dot move per default. So like this, it will always go back at some point to player state move. So now that we have done that, what we can do is we can uh, use those states into the physics process. And instead of having like move function here, we're going to put that move function we're going to uh, encapsulate it into one of those uh, states. So for that, what we need to do is we need to create a match statement. And so here, I need to say match current state player state dot move. And then here, I can put my move function. No, not like this. Voila, voila, et voila. So now when we are, when the current state is on the player state move, we're going to call the function move. And then we can do some other stuff. If player state is uh, into the jump situation, the jump state, then we can call a function jump, for example. We don't have it yet, so I'm going to create it. I'm just going to go under that. I'm going to click function jump, and I'm going to pass for now. 
And so now here, what I can do is that instead of calling my anim state travel into that uh, when my input is pressed, so my uh, key uh, for this word is pressed, so the X key, instead of calling it here, I can just with Alt and the uh, down arrow key, I can move it into my uh, jump function. I can just put it back with like uh, Shift and Tab. Uh, and then what I can do is that here into the input, I can just change the current state to the player state dot jump because now everything gonna pass through the physics process delta so here what i can do is like i can just say current state is equal to player state dot uh, swap and the thing is i have made a typo actually it was, i was not looking to put jump i was looking to put swell <laughs> so sorry for that uh, and so here i'm just gonna change that so swell swell and voila swelled up voila that's good uh, so now what i can do is like i can just like uh, use my uh, my input and i can switch to the player state swell but the problem is that we're not gonna be able to go back i'm gonna show you i launch the game you can see that now it stayed there and I can't move anymore it's because we have no way to reset the to reset the state and so for that what we need to do is we need to create another function and that function we're gonna use it uh, uh, quite some time so like that function I'm gonna just uh, call it um, on state reset something like this uh, and here what I want to do is like I just want to call the current state I want to change the current state and set it equal to the player state that move so we are going back to the main original state that hold our uh, when we are moving and when we are not moving that's what basically what we do and so in the animation uh, the animation player here I can go back for example to uh, sword uh, let's say sword right and I can in the end, I can add a property, uh, what is called a property track. So for that, I need to go here, add track, and I can call that function uh, there. But you do, just need to save to make sure that the function is like saved. The screen, uh, the script is updated. And so here, we need to click on add track, uh, call method track. Then we need to call the um, the node that hold the script with the function that we want to uh, to call. So here's our player. If my script was on my animation player, I will uh, click on anim. But here my script is on the player, so I click here. I click OK, and then here at the end, run here. I'm gonna maybe here actually. I am uh, gonna just make a right click, insert key. And then I'm going to look for my uh, function. And so that function is going to be on state reset. And so now it's going to reset the state. And what we can do is like instead of doing that into all the uh, swear down, we can copy that track. So what we can do is like we come here, edit, copy track. We're going to copy the player method, copy. And then we can pass into, for example, swear down. I can go to edit, pass track and so now it has passed that track there and so i can do that for swirl left edit pass track and then i can do that for swirl up edit pass track and so with that done now it should work so let's let's see i can move and if i press my key you can see that it goes back to normal you can also see that the collision shape is trigger and you can see that also i can stop when I am uh, using my swirl. I can't move at the moment when I am um, using my swirl, which is what I would like uh, to, to keep. So that's how you can set up um, um, a swirl attack into Godot using the animation uh, player and animation tree. And I'm just going to make a test to see if it works well. So right now I'm using my controller. I don't know if you can hear. Hold on. This is my controller <laughs> and so i'm moving right now with the joystick and so let's see if i uh, press on my a button you can see it works too so that's perfect so now we have set up our sword uh, attack and so now we need to use our sword to be able to destroy object that's what we're going to do in the next video so that's it for this video i hope it has been helpful for you so if it's the case don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel uh, and also check the link in the description if you want i have courses i have lots of things in the in the description so anyway i want to thank you for watching and i will see you next time bye